In this episode, I sit down with Rachel from Obscura Studios. We have a real conversation about different stages of life, from profitability to living month by month, from seasons of growth to seasons of stagnation, and how that all affects a creative's mental health. It's not easy. Stick around to the end of the episode. You'll hear a deep conversation between the two of us. You're not going to want to miss it. Thank you, Inspire Business Community, for partnering with us for this season of the Silo Podcast. Creatives, if you need a spot to work with other people, brainstorm, or have an office, Inspire's got you covered. We can't thank you enough for letting us host the podcast in your space. So beautiful and it made for a perfect backdrop. Let's get in the episode. Rachel, hello. Hello. Welcome to the Silo Podcast. We're so glad to have you. Excited for our conversation because it's going to be a good one. How are you doing today? Today's actually started off pretty well. I got some sleep last night even though I stayed up late. It's like, as you know, <laughs> yeah. creatives, we're, we're night owls for the most part. Um, Yeah, I do have a bit of a busy day ahead of me, but this is a perfect way to start it off. So yeah. you work full time as a creative, right? Yes. <laughs> how is how is that life for you? And what are some like struggles you face? We're just going to dive right into struggles. Let's just do that because I'd love to start off. You go with straight that. into the deep end. There's a lot of struggles. Um, I went full time as a creative since COVID actually, because during that time I lost both of my jobs, which I was working like two jobs and then my photography on the side. So that was a lot. So I, part of it I think was like a blessing in disguise actually. Um, but now I run, you know, Obscura Studios full time. I also do like freelance marketing on the side, which I don't push as much on Obscura, but it's it's there. Yeah. Um, I'd say the biggest struggle is there's no, you don't. You never know what your steady income's going to be. And it's very frustrating sometimes. Because there's been months where, hey, it's great. Like you get booked back to back to back. And you're like, hey, I, I got this. And then there's months, which I just had a couple. Was it like April and May? Horrible. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I got through that. But I yeah. did. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing with that is just push through. Because those struggles are temporary. They're they're not going to last. But it's up to you to either give up or, you know, push forward. And you have to learn how to pivot. Like, just say, hey, I'm not making money on shoots. Let me push my marketing clients. So it's not easy yeah, at it's all. A, it's a balancing act, for it sure. It is. It's a huge balancing act. And it's always... It's, I feel like you're just thinking up something different all the time. Like, okay, I can't make money from this this month, so what else can I do? So it's... For me, it's that's one of my biggest struggles. Yeah. Do you feel like your big months and then your low months even out at the very end? Yes. Or, or do you feel like you you lose some but then have to really push to find your way back? It depends. I'd say that's the case sometimes. Um, I I know like a lot of photographers' busy or non busy months are January, February. Those were my busy months this this year. Yeah. And Why do you think that is? I don't. I think it could be like the product stuff, um, small business shoots. Because I know a lot of people are rebranding during that time yeah. too. Like, hey, it's first month of the year. I want to get a shoot done. So I think for me, most of it was that. But my summer months have been a little slow, like spring, summer. Because I'm not, you know, strictly a family photographer, a couples photographer. And I think, you know, all that comes into play. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like... Are you, you have retainer clients, right? Mm -hmm. You have like La Petite. Or, yeah, yeah, they're we, pretty We just awesome. passed it right yeah. on our way in. But like, I've seen a lot of their work. Do you feel like those retainer clients, how long did it take for you to build that kind of relationship with them to be retainer? Because a yeah. lot of people are like, man, I can book seven different companies, but how do I stay with them? How do you stay with I think the part with that, like, we actually were customers first before they were a client, which was super cool. Um, so we went in one day and like they they stayed open during the pandemic. Like they restarted their business during that time. So we gifted them a free shoot because it was like, hey, we're all struggling here. Why don't we just, you know, help each other? They loved the photos so much. They're like, hey, these are doing great. So they hired us as a client, which was really cool. Yeah. And I think to keep them, because there are, ha I mean, there are, even in my business i've lost clients before because people don't have the money or they just want a different direction i think keeping clients is more a personal connection instead so i mean it's not like they become your friends but sometimes they do yeah and it's that like they rely on you it's like hey rachel 
can you come and take some pictures of this this week? And I think alleviating that issue for them is why clients like that stay on. It's the personal connection yeah, for and, the most part. And it helps when you're like a customer first and like are actually accustomed to their product. Yes. Like you know the ins and outs of their product before you go into it and have to have this long like consultation maybe with them. And that's what I like. Like their stuff's great. So now I can actually discuss it. I can take pictures of it because it's good stuff. Yeah. And, and then you can push it. And you, yeah. And you can support it yourself too because you're behind their cause. Well, I'm curious getting into the nitty gritty of that do you do a shoot every month with them or is it less structured? So with them, a lot of times it depends on their needs. So with them, I'd say maybe twice a month because if a lot of times they'll come out with new things. It's like, hey, Rachel, can you come in this Friday? So it's more like, I wouldn't say a structured every month shoot. It's almost as needed, which mm -hmm. is fine with me. Yeah. I live five minutes from them. Um, and same with other clients. Like if they need me, I'm like, hey, pop in. Like I'll just do that. Makes it easier for everyone. Yeah. And then I have all the content to keep, you know, pushing for them for that month. It all just works out when, yes. when one person wins, everyone wins. Thank you. And, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and no, we can I'm get into that further. But like, I think to... It's so interesting to hear that it's, it is such a relationship that they can just be like, hey, come in on Friday. You know, it's not, it, that's like a dream to get towards. And not every customer can be like that, but for that personal relationship to be that deep, to be able to come in, like that you're doing something different than a lot of people can I do. That's what I like. Like, I, I mean, of course you have to have your professional boundaries and everything, but I think at the end of the day, that's what people crave. Like, they don't want some corporate figure. Like, hey, I'm going to come in, take your pictures, cut and dry, like all of that. It's, you know, you have to be that person they can rely on. Because like just what I've, you know, learned in business, like you have to be a solution to somebody else's problem. And they'll keep you on if that's the case. Yeah. So it's a good question. With your work specifically, you have a very unique style. And this is super cool because there's so many people that are like, oh, I want super clean work. But then there's also like the rich, the deep that you provide. Exactly. And I wonder how often people book you for your exact style. Hopefully that is the reason why they're booking you in the first place. But explain how you maybe developed that. Sure. Um, I think for me, I was actually an artist first, a painter. I still do oil paintings, watercolors. And I feel like the other day I was looking at my paintings and my photographer, I was like, these colors are similar. And I always wear black, but like I love deep, rich colors, like in my apartment, in my art, in my photography. And I think a lot of it's just, you know, like color theory. I see everything as art. <clears throat> and I think that translates into my photography as well, which is really cool yeah. to me. Because it's just another medium or outlet for my like emotions, my my vision and all of that. And I'd say people do book me for my vision pretty much. I have had, for instances, where it's like, hey, can you shoot brighter and cleaner? And I'm like, yes, but that's not me. Yeah. But I, if somebody does want to hire me for that, I'm totally okay with it. I usually just sit down and say, hey, what, what's your style? Yeah. Like, do you want mine or is this something else? Yeah. So that I've definitely ran across that before and sometimes it's frustrating <laughs> dang and you know what now that you say that you like even you're wearing your color palette i'm yeah. seeing like <laughs> the golds like i know you have a lot of greens in your Green, photos like red. dark you got, yeah. yeah like it all just works out like it's just this, my living art palette you over are here <laughs> a living art one period but also yes <laughs> but tell me a little bit more about like your experience with with social media and how you run your company and, and stuff like that, because I know you run it a lot differently, more transparently than I feel like most. Yes, which I don't know if it's good or oh, bad. Oh, it's good. It's sometimes. good. It's good. We need that. A lot of people put on that face. They do. And I think, well, that's my, my biggest issue is I never felt like I could relate to other photographers until lately, because now people are being more open about mental health. Um, they're more open about their struggles. And I think as a community, like we need to hear that because what we're, what we're doing is not easy. <laughs> and I think you all totally understand that, like from the cost of gear all the way to booking clients. Like that's, it's not like we're just sitting around waiting for it to no. happen. We're <laughs> spending money, like we're doing a lot of free work. It's yeah. 
hard. It's really hard. Have you ever seen like the graph of like what a photographer does? It's like 10% yes. is actually taking <laughs> yes. taking the photos. Exactly. And 90% is marketing, yep. gear, emails, blah, blah, blah. And I think people don't realize that. And they, it's just like, hey, that's that's a pretty picture. And you do this for free. And like sometimes, yes, I will do it for free because it's my art. But I think... Like, we're still the person behind our work. And I know with me, my least favorite part of it is the business side of it. I don't like booking. I don't like emailing. I don't like scheduling, but I have to do it. So, like, today, that's what I'm going to be doing later. And I think a lot of it's, like, you have to force yourself, which isn't always easy on your mental health, especially if you're struggling financially or if you need new gear, software, it's... Sometimes it just feels like a mountain on your shoulders. But at the end of the day, when you get those bookings and stuff, it's like, hey, this is why I do this. Yeah. And especially like when I get a really good client, like that makes all those problems go away. I'm like, okay, I'm good now. Yeah. But then it's kind of like this. It ebbs and flows, feel like. just it like does. income does. Like, yes. Yeah. It's it's a lot to take in when, when you have seven inquiries. Yeah. You're also working on four galleries. And you have a yes. wedding tomorrow. <laughs> I feel I feel that <laughs> that actually happened to me. Um, so this past week, I had a wedding. I had something before that. I can't remember what it was, but I barely slept. I was running around like a nut. I was like, "How am I doing this?" Like when I got home, I just laid on the floor for twenty minutes. I was like, "I cannot get up and move right now." Yeah. But then you do. Like you have to get up again, and you know, pull yourself up, deliver to your clients. And just make it happen. How do you feel like you manage that personally? Like, yeah. you might have those sleepless nights, but yes. then do you take your time to rest I it do. all? I do. And like, that's one thing I'm, I think I'm getting better at it. I, I'm a workaholic, I'm very stubborn. I don't give up easily. So I'm like, I need to get my work list done for the day. And if I don't, I'm like, hey, I feel like a failure. Yeah. <laughs> so you actually have a, like a physical yeah. or like digital list? I call it my goal list. Yeah. So like yeah. I'll actually, I write it down and I have my digital calendar. Um. So I'll write down my tasks for the day and then just cross them off as I get them done. Satisfaction. Yes. Yeah. And I'm just like crossing them off every, like one by one every day just feels really good. I'll put like win next to it, fail, and like that's probably not healthy, but I'm like, no, like we're getting the list done. <laughs> but I've noticed like that's one thing um, that helped me take rests a lot. So like if I just put my critical tasks on for the day and I finish them, then I can take a break. I can watch a movie or I can go for a walk or go to bed early. And I think you just have to find that balance. Like sometimes yeah. you have to be like, hey, sit down. Like these people can wait. Yeah a night to get an email the next day and that's okay so i think it's just you know prioritizing and making sure you take that time for yourself because if you're an overachiever if you're stubborn if you're this like you're not going to do that until you crash right which then affects everybody mm -hmm. do you feel like um do you do the list the night before so that you have it ready for the next day yep. <laughs> yeah do you, and, and with that yeah. is that because it helps get them out of your head so they're not bouncing around maybe. Yes. So then you're just like, oh, I can be a little bit like mm -hmm. out, right. like a little bit out of here and a little bit down here and just look when I need to do exactly. something. Exactly. That's, you nailed that. <laughs> so like usually the night before I get, sometimes I get anxious at night. So I'm like worried about all the stuff I have to do the next day. So I realize like if I just sit down, set my coffee maker write all of my tasks down for the next day. It's not dwelling here. And to me, like it's helped so much. Like I have a notebook this big like, with my goal lists. Yeah. And the really cool thing is like you can look back and kind of see how far you've come with it. And it's like, wow, I thought I was failing here, but I'm not, I'm here now. Yeah. So I would totally tell everyone to do that at some point in our life. It's discipline. Like I used to be the biggest procrastinator. I would just push things off until last minute all the time. I don't do that anymore. I think that's been two years of just sitting down and getting it done. It just, it has to be ingrained. This is just a habit. Like yeah. I need to be in my notebook yes. the night before yes. or else I won't be productive. Well, it's Maybe become a habit day. now. Yeah. I'm like, it's a healthy habit and it's helped my work. Um, it helps me get client galleries out early, which is good. Do you have a ton of creative 
sprints and then a ton of rest periods or is it a little bit more spaced out than um, like can you deliver three galleries in a night and then not work on galleries the next three days kind <laughs> yes. of deal yes i was it recently i think i sat down and got four galleries done Ooh. and i was like i am getting these out because i want a friday off yeah so i think that's fine. like you have to dangle that reward in front yeah. of you sometimes uh-huh as long as it doesn't affect your work, because I still want to make sure they're getting quality work. But then again, like as an artist, like you probably get this, like you have those creative moments. You're like, I can do this. Like I feel it. I just want to sit down and edit and make this look gorgeous. And then you look at the clock, it's almost midnight, but then you still have everything done. Exactly. So I do get like that sometimes. Like it's almost like that manic, like I'm very creative today. Right. It's just, it hits you and you're like, yeah. hey, I don't know what I'm doing. I need to clear my calendar. Yes. This is when yeah. I'm going to get stuff yes. done. Because if it's I like don't, magic or I something. won't do it later or something. Yeah. No, I that happens a lot, actually. And and in that too, you also are very vocal yeah. on social media, on your stories of like, hey, yes. I'm gone this weekend. You will not yes. hear from me. <laughs> and those are super good boundaries. I'm curious if you have any other like boundaries that you put in place to help guard your mental health there. That's definitely one because like we were just saying, we do need breaks. Like I wanted to see my family. It was in early July and they live near the beach. I was like, I'm going to take this time and have it with my friends and family yeah. because, you know, we all deserve that. So that's one thing I was like, I'm not going to be able to get the emails this week. And everyone is very understanding. Sometimes you get one or two, but... I think the other thing is I try not to send emails after like seven. So I was like, like, that's my time. Yeah. And like, that's your time. I mean, if it's urgent, then yes, I sent an email 10 o'clock last night. So it was important. <laughs> I was like, okay, this has to get fixed. But I try to do that. So like if someone sends a business text, call, email, say, hey, I'll get back to you in the morning or I'll schedule it for like eight and eight in the morning. Right. So they see it then. Yeah. I think like respectful. just having those boundaries where you're not always able to be contacted, like that's been really healthy for me. I'm not always the best at, you know, upholding it, but I have to or I will go nuts. <laughs> yeah. Putting down your computer at like 5 p.m. or I mean, it's tough as a freelancer to be like, hey, I'm going to work the nine to five life. But at some point it's like hey, this is my evening, and maybe I'll actually spend time with the person that gets off at 5 p.m. Yes. No, <laughs> that's exactly it. Like, tonight I have, um, if you didn't check out Curio downtown, it's like a little art gallery. I put some of my art in there. There's only like a pocket sketchbook swap. So I'm actually going to close my computer and walk down tonight and just have like a lovely time. I think you have to find those breaks in your life because if you don't, I mean, work can become your life but then it starts affecting others around you so that's yeah that's one thing like even with my family my sister lives near me so I babysit a lot and I'll drop anything for those yeah. kids she's like hey I need you to come over I'm like I'll be there like I'm gonna close my computer for an hour and spend time with my niece and nephew so you have to do those or you will you'll lose it yeah I feel like there, there's some benefits to freelancing like yeah. being able to just set down your work being your own boss but then there's also the, I'm always odd. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fun at times, but also is the mind racing that is, oh, new idea popped up. I either have to write it down right now or enact <laughs> on bad. it. Or like, yeah. hey, it's 1 a.m. On a, on a Monday. Like, you know, I, I got to do something. I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> there's been times like in the middle of the night, I'll just like put something in my nose. I'm like, oh, it's a great idea for a shoot. And you probably understand that too. Like your brain never yeah. stops. Then it's 3 a.m. You have the shoot plan. And you're like, I'm looking yes. for models right now. Yes. It's like, <laughs> should I post something about this at three? Or is everyone going to think I'm just insane at this point? But no, that's like one thing. My brain never stops. And it's like my worst and worst enemy and best friend, I would say. Because that's where our creativity comes from. But I think you have to... <laughs> almost like you have to force it to just shut up yeah. sometimes it's like look just take a break sit yeah. down like you don't always have to be on but like when you run your own business i feel like you do so that's been that's a struggle yeah. for me i feel like do you feel and i feel this a little bit so i'm curious if i'm alone in this do you feel like some of what you're building is your entire life so like you gotta be 
on at all times because I'm building the future for myself as a freelancer. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And there's always, it's that. And I think that fear of failure too, which I feel like we shouldn't be afraid of, but we all are. It's like, hey, I don't want to do all this and like do all this stuff for people, create art, and then just fail one day yeah or give up or yeah stop it exactly and i think that's why like our brains just don't shut off because it's definitely you know your future work it's 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 like a survival thing almost yes that's (laughs) exactly to provide for myself now and that's oh my gosh i think that's why my brain that's another reason it's like the survival the future and then just delivering to others Mm -hmm. it's like how can i be better but there's no perfection in life, so I think we all need to take a little break on ourselves once yeah. in a while. But yeah, I, I understand that a lot. Yeah. Michaela said um, to be gentle with yourself. Yes. Has been a really key factor in her life. I like that. I do too. A lot, actually. <laughs> and that's weird. I um, This is TMI probably, but I started going back to therapy and I had a well, session. That's not TMI, that's awesome. Thank you. It's hard, but I had a session yesterday she said the same thing. It's like you have that negative voice in your head just saying, hey, you're a failure. You can't do this. You need to quit because you're not making enough money this month. It's like, why? Who told you that? Right. Like, most people in your life want to see you succeed, so why aren't we listening to those voices yeah. instead? And you just go to your notes real quick and yes. look back seven years ago, and I've done that. Exactly. But look where I'm at now. See, that's another thing, too. Like, it's okay to look back. Like, you're not a failure. Like, just keep going i think that's like the biggest message i have for people for me it's like i look back at my work from when i first started i'm like cringe but does that mean growth because to me that means growth huge growth yes to see that i actually developed like a color palette that is meaningful or has been like richer where it's not just like i can see that like i try to turn down the yellow so much in this like (laughs) <laughs> like a photo, like, oh, I hated yellows at the beginning because I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't know how to do, I don't know how to work the greens oh, in an image. So I'm just worst. like, oh, just yellow, take it all out. I just want greens. <laughs> no, but I, I've noticed in your work, like you have a color palette. It's gorgeous. Like yours is distinct now. So like, it's definitely, it's something to look back on. So I'd say my first shoots were horrible. I look back, I'm like, what was I thinking? That was so tacky, like just dumb poses. Um, horrible color. Mine were very blue, actually. Now I tend to like lean toward more warmth. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's okay to not judge ourselves back then. Like we were trying and you didn't give up. And, and now we're it's gonna, like, hey, look at my work now. Like, yeah, that's and we're going to look back three years in the future, look back at where yes. we are now and be like, like what yeah, was that's that? still gross yeah. <laughs> and compared to where I'm at now. And that can be preferences, that can be like maturity. I think there's a level of maturity that comes with like looking back, but also like there's a reverence in like being like, you know what? I did that. Yes. And I'm now here. And you stuck with it. Yeah. And that's what matters. Cause you know, part of it I'd say is talent, but for the most part, skill. Like if you just stick with something, you will be good at it. Like we're never gonna be perfect. And I think like the beauty is that, like your imperfections. Like that's why I love seeing everyone's different work. I'm like, wow, like that's really cool. They took that perspective with that. Like I would have never thought to do that. So I think like that's, you know, we have to be a little more gentle with ourselves yeah. when it comes to our art. And we oh, all have right. artist brains. We're all never good enough in our own minds. But yeah, that perfection is a loud voice in yes. a lot of people's minds. And then you really just have to to step back and let other people say, yeah. well, that's actually perfect in my head. And that's and what like, it is. Um, you're like, okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're just our own worst yeah. critics pretty much. We have to be a little more lenient with ourselves. I'm not one to talk, but I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. And that's another thing too with like just yeah. being a freelancer. Everyone thinks that you have to be perfect, but also in the corporate world, everyone is just making it up as they go. Yes, like, they are. <laughs> I've worked in that too, and I will never go back. Yeah. I'll be honest. I've learned a lot in those you know, situations, but it's also not a healthy one for me. Like I'd rather just do my own thing. Cause you're still put in a box. Like when you're in a corporate setting for, I mean, at least in my experience, yeah. cause I know there's people who really enjoy it, but 
I was never able to create like I wanted to. I was always like I worked for a creative agency. They're great, but I wasn't able to create. Yeah. It had to fit this certain format. I'm like, how are you creative when you're squelching like artists? Like, this is what I do. Right. I just felt very, you know, bound. Like I can, yeah. you know, express myself and now I feel okay. Yeah. So that's one thing I'll take. Less money, but able to be myself. Yeah. Always. It's, it's, I feel like too, because of that, it's like a time thing. Yeah. I mean, everything I think boils down to time, but like, yes, your project is due on Friday. Hey, guess what? I don't work that way. Like, yes. I don't work in the confines of your nine to five. If I work from nine to twelve and burnt out to all ends, but then want to work from like seven to ten to get See, it done, that's what it is. Like, it's yeah. project based work that like excites me, and that's like me too, because I'm not if you probably have an artist's brain. Like you want to work on a project. Like that's fun. And it's kind of like what I'm doing with Helen and Gretchen tomorrow. Like it's a project. I'm not, you know, dreading it or anything. If you had a chance to like make the ideal client, what would that look like to you? Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I actually did think about that question because you sent it over. So I recently did have an ideal oh. client. I... On the download, do website and logo stuff yeah, too. Yeah, which do, is sick. I, I love, love, love it. That stuff. I just keep doing a lot because I will burn out so quick. Um, but her and her husband um, started a cleaning company called Ordained Hands. Giving them a shout out here. Hey, yo, um, awesome, amazing people. Like I, I wish all my clients were like them. All of them are great, but they were exceptional. So they needed a website, so I did that for them. Then they needed a logo, so I did that for them. Then they were like, we're going to book a shoot, you know, of us two, like, for our business. I never worked with such grateful, amazing, oh. kind people in my life. Like, they respected, like, my contracts, my time frames, everything. They never pushed. They were never like, hey, where, where are my photos? When's this going to be done? Because, like, you know, it takes a long time. Yeah. And I, I'd say like their work came out great because I didn't have like that nagging or that overbearing feeling. They were honestly some of my favorite clients to yeah. work with. So they would be my ideal. Yeah. And most people I get are great. Like they really are, but they were just like top notch. Just very like respectful, understanding. They supportive. Um, just, oh my gosh, I, I can't say enough about them. <laughs> They were well, really cool. What would you say to someone that like wants to book with you but doesn't know how to go about it? Like obviously you can go to your website, but what does it look like to book with Obscura Studios? So that's one thing I need to work on a little because I'm not good with the back end. I mean, I am just not for myself. Um, so most it's a little more casual for me. Like I know some people go through like questionnaires and stuff like that, but my attention span is not there most days. And I know other people's aren't. So I'm just like, hey, um, shoot me a DM or email me. And I'll usually start from there. Um, so usually they'll tell me like what they're looking for, either in a DM or email. If they do Instagram Messenger, I'll just say, hey, like, what's your email address? I'll reach out to you. And that it's a little easier for them. Um, but I'll usually ask them like what they're going for. Um, like what type of shoot, all that. I'll put a mood board together if they book with me, contract, invoice. So it's pretty simple. Sometimes there's a lot of back and forth if it's a wedding because like they're trying to like weigh their options, which yeah. is totally okay. Um, I'd say it's pretty stress free. Yeah. Like I try to, you know, get back to people on time. Um, because that's one thing. Like that's my pet peeve. Like if I want to book a shoot, I don't want to wait weeks just to hear it from you because then I'll probably move on. So I try, like, as soon as I get an inquiry, I'm like, hey, I saw it. I will respond to you. And it usually takes me, like, a day or less. So it's pretty painless. Yeah. So I want to remove all of that stress from booking. But, yeah. Absolutely. What is it? What is your opinion? Yeah. And I, this might be a strongly contested within the photographer community, so I'm interested. What is your opinion on having pricing on the website? Or do you send a pricing guide after the inquire? So I've done it both ways before. And... I don't know. I don't think I like it on my website. Okay. I mean, I know it does work for people that way, and that's great. But I feel like with me, it scares people off. Like, they'll go on your website and see, it's like, okay, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Because I do have other options, 
you know, in addition to the ones that are on my website. Yeah. So I think I just removed that page. I'm trying to redo my website right now. That's been a lot, a lot of work. Um, but I think I'm just going to keep them off because like, I don't know if you've seen, like I do offer like payment plans now because I totally get the broke thing. Like, yeah. I came from nothing. I still struggle some days. And like we all can't afford a $500 portrait session, right. which is understandable. Yeah. Same with weddings, same with, you know, food photography. So a lot of times I'd rather them just reach out so we can work something out. Yeah. I mean, I do have my pricing and then it's like, hey, let's, how do you want to break it down? So I think like you have to offer that in this day and age because yeah. everything's really expensive. <laughs> like really. Like photography is still kind of a luxury service, it I would is. say. It is. It is. It goes along with like the therapy and, and like massages and stuff like that. Like, yes. Not everyone can afford to better their life in that way, That's, unfortunately. I was just thinking about that actually. I'm like, this is actually, it's not a necessity, but I think it is. Yeah, like, I and think then, so we have them, an opinion on that that is yeah. so actually more telling than what people, the general society realizes. Yeah. I mean, because especially if you're like, just say you're getting into modeling or if you have a small business, a restaurant, like you need quality images for people to take you seriously. Yeah, I mean, there's that's so many studies that say like visual or video yes. alone yes. increase <laughs> your sales. And that's what I don't, you've probably struggled with that too. Like people don't understand that. It's like, hey, I can just take a crappy picture with my phone and That'll suffice. Yeah. Like, no, like you need quality images and video. Or you've had clients in the past that have had yes. websites that are like, I would never have that photo on my oh, site. Can all I the please, time. Can I please help you there? Or if a blurry one or pixelated image shows up there, I'm like, come on, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not judging, but I am a little. Yeah. Like it's, you, you need, you know, that's anymore. Everything's online. Like that's the window to your business, to you, like to your brand. Yeah, you need to be taken seriously. So to me, it's a necessity. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Everyone hear that? <laughs> what is it? What would you say to someone who is just starting out in photography to get started? What is the most essential? Do you need to know? Like, what is your why? Like, what is, what, what is the, the starter kit for a photographer in your eyes? I think Figure out what you want to do. I mean, that I'm saying that loosely because I still will shoot anything, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, I have my niche. Like, I love food photography. I love people, like, fine portraits. Um, so that's what I push. But I will, like, be open to shooting more than what you want to do. Yeah. Because that'll give you more opportunities in the long run. It's like, hey, I know them. Like, they'll do that. And then you get business. Even if it's something you don't want to do, like, you have to start that way. And I think the other thing for me, I made sure I learned my camera settings down to a T. Like, you have to. Shoot manual. I will not judge anyone if you just throw it on automatic, but shoot manual like with your lens and the camera yep. sometimes you will learn so much about light like i don't need a light meter anymore i can just look at the limb like oh i know how to set that now and i think if your skills are there like that's your base like hone them so well like be your best and you will you'll make it I really do think that. Yeah, it's it's definitely the person more than the tools. Yes. You can have a you. bad camera and still pull off great images. Well, fun fact, my the main camera I shoot with is almost 11 years old and nobody knows that. Yeah. And I and love the camera, so I refuse images. to I've refused to get rid of it. It just it's mine. It feels like film to me cuz that's how I started. Um, but yeah, I love it and no one knows I'm shooting with an old camera. Yeah. You'll never know. There's always <laughs> there's always some ceiling you will hit, sure, with like either depth of field when you switch from like yeah DSLR to mirrorless. I've seen a lot of that. You still produce amazing images, and to take it a step further, it's not always about the bodies either. Yeah, you know, it's always it's like the glass that's in front of it. Thank it's like you. you have good glass, <laughs> yes. I'm sure, on that 11 year old camera, and that's why it's still doing great. Like you said, that's what matters. Like I usually shoot with an 85. I'm mostly a prime lens shooter. I just love my prime. So it's usually a 30, 35, 30. I always get those mixed up. A 50 and then my 85. And that's pretty much it. I, I love them. It's all you need, <laughs> honestly. I mean, maybe a little bit wider. 
Yeah. Like, like that had, could be nice yeah. sometimes. Maybe a Zoom here and there if I start doing more weddings yeah. and stuff. But, but the, yeah. the primes are a lot sharper in the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rachel, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming on and spreading all the knowledge and all the depth and experience that you've gained uh, going freelance. and Yeah. And super you guys are doing some awesome stuff. Thank you. And yeah, I, I really appreciate you having me on. If anyone ever wants to reach out, if you need help, tips, like let me Book, know. Book, Obscura I, Studios. Yes, I do Get not blame. I there. am here to help, so. Yes. All right, thanks. <laughs> you guys are the best. <laughs> Thank you. This was so fun. Did it.